Welcome in my podcast, The French Futurist. Today, we are welcoming Anastasia Boschkov, uh, an amazing lady who will talk with me about governance. Um, Anastasia, very nice to meet you. I'm so pleased to host you today. Likewise. <laughs> that, uh, I'm discovering uh, your story, uh, um, but I think that's very important for all of us to, to understand who you are. Can you, can you begin by your story, explaining us who you are? Kind of philosophical question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to figure out who I am. But um, uh, my name is Anastasia Bashko. I'm originally from uh, Odessa. I'm living in Kyiv for almost seven years. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in Kyiv, they call me Stacy. Yeah, I mean, because I'm working a lot with international partners, and for some reason, it's hard for them to spell the whole name. So I'm going to call Stacey me Stacy. Stacy, more than last year? Yeah, it's, it's like call me Stacy, and then it's going to be my stage name. I'm leading, uh, I'm executive director of Ukrainian Corporate Gardens Academy. Um, it's, I mean, still my family and my friends do not understand where I'm working and what I'm doing. But um, the important that I know, <laughs> we're promoting the, the the culture of corporate governance in the government and uh, private business, the board of directors, how it works, why do we need it? So it's kind of one of the most efficient instruments uh, anti corruption. Since uh, since how long this academy is uh, is existing? How old? How, how, long, uh, how long academy is it? It's since uh, 2017. It's worse than the six years. You created it? Uh, no, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You are participating? <laughs> yes, the founders uh, are Ivers Abramovich's Sadoma Saudiska and Roma Bonder. Uh, Ivers was the Minister of, of Economy, and uh, once he got there, he is from super European view into the business. So he said, listen, we have the, the only one instrument that can help us to fight corruption, and this is going to be the culture of corporate governance. Mm -hmm. But at that time, nobody knows about that in Ukraine, unfortunately. So I joined an executive director in 2019. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a think tank uh, around yeah. governance uh, yeah. to introduce the rules of governance inside the country. Yeah, and uh, you will like it because we have a memorandum with INSEAD uh, oh, Business School. Nice. Yeah. So all of our programs are based by their methodology. We bring professors from their uh, INSEAD to Ukraine to teach Ukrainian businessmen what is it and why they, they need it. Uh, the, the main problematic in Ukraine, I'm myself part of board since many, many years. Uh, I think people don't understand the difference between director and board. Yeah, and um, what, what I see, I mean, maybe you can tell me also how it works with the, with the companies where you're working in the boards, but the main problem in Ukraine when the, our businessmen try to face it, it's like, I don't want that somebody will control me when I control everything. I yes. mean, I don't want you guys to come on my place and tell me what to do or ask why I spend so much money. I build this business. Why are you going to come and tell me about that? So this is going to be the shift of understanding the cultural, the, the need of it and how it works. Then it's our work to present them, to study them. Uh, how I see it, me, because I was myself also in this position of uh, why to put a yeah. board and so on. Uh, how I see it is, uh, there, there is two things uh, for me important. The uh, first one, uh, having a, a space as a founder or CEO for, where we can exchange strategy. You know, when, when there is a freedom of telling, I don't know how to do that. How can we know for, and having people experience inside it to help, to switch, to brainstorm. But uh, if I may, uh, a board is a situation of power. And, and that's also a second part that is very important for a founder to be able to have a board who, who is giving you this, uh, this um, uh, brainstorming, you know, this, this plus, yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah. not giving you the, the minus of needing to, to fight always for the question of politics uh, to achieve what you want. That, that's very subtle, very complicated. It's very sensitive. Yes. Just, just to, the, the, you have to go for, for the path just to understand the, the value of it, how to work with it, to be, to be open to just, you know, this uh, instrument and an exercise to develop your trust, the empathy, uh, honesty. That's, that's very, I think that this kind of uh, 
type of characters that uh, we don't have in Ukraine in the business uh, society. How, how your academy is promoting? How is it working? You you work with uh, with big companies uh, to to try to give them a, a, a way of doing. Uh, how is it working on on a, on a daily basis? We have. Uh, <coughs> The basic program that we we're doing it for the education. So educational programs, they are our basic instrument. How to inspire people, tell them uh, how, so why. Training to, basically. Yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, we have our program, the board direction. It's uh, the the only one program with which uh, the academy started. We had, of course, like everyone, we had like a huge plans with like yeah. six or seven new programs for 2022. But, but shit happens, mm -hmm. and um, the the main of it is just to create the climate where people will start to perform, and you when you, they, this peer pressure, but then you come to the pro educational program, you meet the top businessmen, you can talk with them, you see that oh he tried, maybe I should try that too, and then they have this conversation, they're trying to get open. So, I mean. I would say that we are building the, the, the climate where people were started to grow like flowers mm -hmm. just to the new level. And we're doing with the with the education, with some networking conferences, with parties. Parties are like the most yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. alcohol and hanging out <laughs> with each other. I mean nobody can <laughs> beat with that. Um, some trips and so on. But But it's a lot of uh, question of networking. Yeah, we uh, have to say that uh, we have uh, the special like security face control of the people who join in our program. They have to be like a specific level because 50% of the, the information that uh, professors are giving during the program, the other 50% you get from the people during the coffee breaks or okay. the group wars when you have you know, the simulation of the boards. That's exactly where they, tr they open and then they become very f close friends. So it's very really important about the people who are sitting in the room to which they can get uh, in the contact, to just building you know, the frame with the people who are going to fit in. So it's, it's very detailed work. On How long is the training? Yeah. The word direction is six intensive days. Six okay. intensive days. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that's, I suppose it's in, uh, in Ukrainian? It's in English. It's in English. It's oh, in English, good. And, but we have a simultaneous translation during the whole program. And I have to say that we push people, those who don't know English, come into Baca. Thank you very much. Now I sign it up for English <laughs> courses and I will go there. <laughs> um, uh, I'm telling you that because my, uh, my director is, um, um, is a woman, a young woman. I took the, the choice of, uh, of a young woman who is my right hand uh, inside the foundation. And I'm beginning to, to promote inside the foundation a culture of, uh, um, of, of the logical of governance, you know, there is a big difference between a position of director, you know it well, uh, who is leading the operation on a daily basis uh, and, and facing the waves uh, somehow, and a position of, of uh, uh, board of director or head of the board of director where you need to, to have uh, one eye on the operation but one eye on in front. And I'm promoting a lot since many, many years uh, the fact that inside the boards, uh, from my startup, uh, where I was myself, uh, you need to have a balance uh, between women uh, and men, uh, because we are working on a different way, very complementary, but at the end of the day, it's something interesting. Uh, and so that's why I'm asking you, uh, typically I can send you people, uh, how is it working? Uh, <laughs> you need to have a you need to have a checklist. <laughs> typically, you're gonna send me the list of the potential students. Or what do you mean that you? I mean, I mean, uh, inside, I would like to promote some people inside my organization uh -huh. or inside some startup uh, I'm investing in. How, how is it working? I, uh, are these people uh, going to you for, and and applying? Uh, or, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it's <laughs> the easiest way: go to the website, and to click. <laughs> click, sign up for the program, and then our manager. Uh, Community leader will uh, invite them, have a conversation, get them more details how the whole program. And but then, of course, they will have to go for the whole procedure of approving the candidates with our nomination committee. And then, congratulations, you are uh, on the board. Okay. Have, a, have a nice flight. I'm asking you that for a second question. Is your academy also um, 
Because when you are training people for governance, uh, you are also uh, um, uh, central inside a reserve of people who can be on other boards. And, and I'm, I'm participating in France, for example. I'm French, it's obvious. Uh, <laughs> Such a big surprise! <laughs> surprise! <laughs> I'm participating in France on the same type of academy or, or let's say, a think tank. And it's used a lot to find other people to participate to boards. Is it also something that is uh, uh, in your case? Well, n not unfortunately, not now. We have uh, we have a non-executive directors database. It's uh, the base that each student it's like a profile that each our graduate will fill, and then if somebody was looking for a candidate for, to the board, they can go to our net database and just by filters pick up some candidates that they would like to invite. The and mostly students think that once they will join the program and then by the end they will receive a ticket or a board seat immediately right after the program. Yeah. It doesn't work like this. The problem is in Ukraine that we don't have so many boards. So to fill, I mean, and I, I understand my graduates because they come in, okay, we finished, what's next? And I mean, bye guys, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> see you later. But uh, now our like attention goes exactly to, to how to push Ukrainian business community to understand why do they need the board and this is a very useful instrument so they will start to create it and then I will have places, seats to feed my graduates into these boards. But it's like it, it's a synergy. Yeah, I cannot yeah. do it by my own. I mean, I want them to be ambassadors so once they're going to finish the program they will go and spread the misinformation and put the new... Try yeah. it, try it. It's, it's useful. It's, um, but not sitting and waiting, like when I call them, hey, I have like an invitation to SpaceX board. Would you want to go there? But at the end of the day, again, uh, that's a discussion we, uh, we had. Uh, it's, it's a lot of question of networking. Me, when I'm choosing my board, I'm choosing my board also by the values they can add uh, and, the, and the level of, uh, of, of, of politics they will not do. Uh, you, you, see, you, you see what I mean? And how do you think, uh, will uh, potentially international boards, maybe in France, maybe not, not in France, will be interested in the Ukrainian board members? Uh, I think so, more and more. Uh, mostly in, in, in some type of technology or some type of market when Ukrainian people are having a high knowledge. Uh, I think Ukraine, I, I see Ukraine now as a, as a, uh, as a country who, who is having a huge potential for the next 10, 15 years. Uh, typically, for me, uh, even if now it's not obvious, uh, Ukraine is doing in couple of a uh, couple of years uh, what the country is doing in, in 10, 15, 20 years. So, as soon as the war will be over, and it will be over at a moment of time, at that moment of time, the, the country will open like a flower. And the people who will be in charge at that moment uh, will have a lot of value. They know perfectly well East, meaning all this area with a special way of doing, uh, a special culture for things. They will, uh, they will be able also to provide uh, in some technology uh, everything touching the war tech, unfortunately, uh, security, but also uh, in tech in general. Uh, my guy in AI are absolutely amazing here. A different way of thinking and that is not something you find easily uh, under a tablet yeah. or uh, on, on, on the west side. So uh, I think that can be very very good uh, as a link in between uh, uh, for sure but now that's also a big question of education uh, on the west side uh, as well as here and secondly uh, your English is perfect most of the people are not speaking English, uh, and boards, uh, all of them, are, are English. international. Yeah, yeah. Even if you are not able, you no, know, it's not a question of being academic in English, but at least to be able to explain your ideas, to don't think when you speak. Enfin, you know, that's yeah. the basics. Yeah. And that, uh, I, I still, I still <laughs> have this, this problematic. Uh, me, when I'm traveling inside the country, it's still, uh, I still need a translator or my assistant or to, be, to be around me because most of the countries are speaking one word of English. There's, so. by the way, a problem right now because uh, 
as as many teens in Ukraine struggled within the past year, and when I try to find look like just on the market to find like new members to the team because I need it, um, must it's it, I, I thought it it will be fruitful because a lot of people lost their job, but in my case it was not because only those who doesn't know English left, yeah. and it's and and those who knows I mean it's it's a huge problem for Ukraine for this yeah. demographic changes because. <clears throat> Still, I, I, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it's, how those situations will push us forward to, Alors, to make changes. Speaking about you, I have a couple of ideas that are having on my, uh, on my head. Uh, it's very interesting uh, what you are doing around the governance on the profit side of the society. Uh, I'm not from a military world. I created the, my foundation at the beginning of the war, but it's, it's not my past, you see what I mean? So I'm arriving uh, with my eye of entrepreneur, independent, and so on. And I'm discovering a world that is now uh, transforming the society of non-profit. Are you somehow working inside the concept of governance for non-profit? I have to say that we are a non-for-profit organization. Agreed. And <clears throat> my biggest dream um, is to promote or even just to create with the, you know, just not take it, put it like an idea on the table, but still just go and do it. The tr um, trust, uh, the board of trustees in cultural projects, in universities, in museums, and in, in just can you imagine how we just can jump up if you will invite some people, international people from around the world, just to make a strategy on working and just mm. grow this potential? It can work, but the problem will be on the other side of the management of those non-for-profit organizations, because which never ever work with such instrument like the board. And then you you just you just talked with the, you know this to different worlds mm. and you have to build this bridge but maybe if you will invite the people from from international side you don't have to explain them how to work in the board of trustees or how to just promote and do those to just bring the value to the company but then you have those who worked like 30 years as they worked and then again I mean listen I have my system here why would you come to my home and tell me what to do? I mean, yeah. I know when my candy is on the shelves. I know who I'm going to pay on, the, on this side. I know where I'm going to work to. And, uh, don't make my life harder, <laughs> okay? So in this case, it's more just to create the board of trustees. It's kind of like a law on the government side. But I can take it on my side to ed educate the management. And it's also, it comes to the, you know, this creating a climate understanding there's going to be like a time when the people will fight with getting out of their zone of comfort yeah, yeah. but then you just you take their hand and you just listen it's fine we just we all just getting out of the zone of comfort but what you can get on the other side of this so it's 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 a long path that i will what is the what is the relationship uh, between uh, between an academy like you and the political power I, uh, is the political power uh, hungry uh, of this type of move? Uh, uh, not uh, uh, totally in, 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 uh, they don't fucking care. Uh, what? How, how is it going on? Well, the the corporate governance reform is one of the most uh, hardest reforms, I think, because again, it's 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 the system of corruption that is deeply inside the mentality, and. Um, I, and it's uh, the, the, the reform is since like 2016, 17 uh, years. And it's the, the, we don't have significant changes in that, but still just, you know, baby steps, moving, moving. We have enormous support about that with the international financial corporations like EBIR, DIFC, OSD. They, they're very interested in that. And I see this, the huge movements right now in the changes in the government side, like in the Ministry of Economy, yeah. those who are really into the corporate governance topic. So there is a battlefield right now on their level between those who want to make those changes and those who do not, because yeah. it's not in their interest. Um, so 
we just being like a support team for those who are really fighting for that on their level and really when they going back to us for example we have uh, uh, scholarships uh, with the EBRD for government representatives they're working for the corporate governance reform and then can you know influence and make some changes once they're going to finish the program so um, you see that w the, the government is changing in Ukraine yeah but uh, yeah but fast uh, it's fast and it's clean it up like you just call the clean lady just to clean it uh, the whole process but and you meet the new people and you of course you have to educate them how to move forward because for me personally my biggest fear is when we will win nothing will change we do, do you really think that um because it's it's like a train you know i speak train uh, uh with the dynamic of the train and and it's for me it's, it's uh, it would be surprising that this dynamic uh, from one day to another one is stopping you know I agree with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would not say that I think so, but I really, it really it scares me when I start to think that or just you know face some some similar situation that were like normal from before the war because we just you know, we live in it, but not not right now, and that scares me a lot. How to how Did to manage you, that? How, how do you see the country since the beginning of the war? Do you see do you see a big uh, big move inside uh, of the society, the way to, to, to make the governance of the society? Uh, yeah, well, like, like every girl, <laughs> um, I have dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I see that in my, my, my ideal picture of this world that right now we have uh, the, the strongest team that is fighting for on the political level, the president, the, his team, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, nobody will think ever who another can be and do this job. And by the way, if you did, I mean, yesterday I saw this a video, it was like 2016, or no, not 2000, when he was elected, he was sitting like a very small guy who just stood out from the stage and talking about the economics. And he was, and then you see this face of, this human yeah. that is he was just grew up like mm. in, enormous mm. and I, I i would want that while he's fighting for our freedom and democracy there's another team that's already working on the society programs on the develop not only develop like rebuilding the infrastructure but rebuilding human souls and just preparing, preparing the nation of living afterwards the war. That, okay, we just, we won, so now we have to keep our face and show that we changed. How are we gonna show that we changed? Corporate governance, good governance, new, just in, attracting the investments. Everybody's talking about the investments, but nobody will give us investments if we will not show that they can trust us. How they can trust us, if we will show changes. Yeah. So. I believe yes, it will. But um, you have a lot of, inside the country. You have a lot of initiative. I'm, I'm, I'm because I'm, I'm in the center of the game by definition between the the rebuilding the country with my program with 3D printing and technology and so on, and the actual situation on the front. And I'm meeting a lot of interesting initiative. Rise, for example, yeah. uh, with uh, with very very. In that's a clever way to, to you know, to pass the next uh, the next couple of years uh, to introduce uh, governance, uh, to introduce a way of doing uh, on international standard, because you are not the only one to tell that we need to be ready for the next phase. The the, the time that we will live in once the war finish is going to be the hardest. And it's going to be the hardest from the psychological way, uh, the question, because first of all, it's it's also kind of the ESG uh, principles of preparing the diversity. And diversity is not only the the women and men; it's also the people that with the, they have their abilities. There's some kind of situation. Those guys that will come back from the war. 
we ha we have to be ready to to uh, welcome them. We have to be ready how to talk with them, how to invite them into the team, how to work with them, knowing that they're gonna have a problem because come on, I mean, of course, it's in, it's not only in the companies and and so no, first of all, in the companies, it goes from the level of the of the board just to you know just follow those ESG principles, but then how this bullying in schools and so it's. And how do you gonna? You lost the business. You lost the family. So it's it's a it's a very very tough times are coming up. But and I'm I'm afraid will we struggle with them or not? Because we will win. But how are we gonna deal with those problems? How do you see? Uh, you you are living here since seven years. Yeah. Uh, did you did you fly abroad uh, at the beginning of the war and came back uh, or oh, you stayed around? <laughs> um, I, uh, I made my, I made a gift to my mom on birthday, uh, and I took her to Expo 2020 to Dubai, and we flew there uh, on February 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> We're sitting, you know, just sipping in prosecco and discussing. Come on, it will never happen. I mean, you should be like such a silly and stupid idiot just to do that. And next morning, like a kind of hangover, my mom just opened and get out <laughs> from the bathroom and said, oh, it's going to be nice to have a beer right now. And I said, mom, <laughs> the war. And I have to say that it's, it's harder to, to go through for, for all this shit uh, being abroad because just, you know, you, you're constantly sitting and reading the news. You don't know mm. what exactly is going on here. And that is my, my personal trauma. I was trying to hard to getting back to, to Kiev. Mm. Been, everyone told me you're you're stupid, you're crazy, you don't go back. And I, and I got back in uh, in two months. So I got back in April. And I have to say I was never ever happy in my life. Just walking down the street in Kiev. It was so so you know flowered with the sirene and so it's, i mean the smell oh, and nice. you have this feeling that you're living right here right now and you're not gonna waste any time in your life and that is amazing do you feel the city of kiev changed yes people, uh, people changed and um i see a lot of people from kharkiv and from other like Dnipropetrov, zaporozhye you, you just, you can yeah, see yeah, them, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I have to say that Kiev is really living, living the life. And there's a lot of international people mm. coming here. It's kind of, you know, this <laughs> risky adventure. And generally, and you just, you know, you, you have this feeling that life is keep moving on. There's kind of international hub. Um, what makes me, you know, just feeling you know, ridiculous, it's still when a siren and it's and nobody just I mean giving a fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean you just keep walking down the street and okay, and this you know just strong feeling inside. Or just we will never ever put it on a pause our life. But in Odessa, for example, it's not like that. It's uh, it's oh, very sad. It's super sad situation. So my mom came to Kiev few days ago and she said like I mean I cannot yeah. understand what's going on over here. But on this side, we, uh, I was in this a couple of uh, two weeks ago something like that. Uh, just for the electricity it's, it's very very complicated. Uh, I have a lot of people working from Odessa yeah. and they have just a couple of hours of electricity during the day. So of course uh, we send uh, a lot of electric power and, and uh, the necessary material uh, but still the situation there is very very complicated. <coughs> It's a bit, it's, it's like creating a depression. Yeah, <laughs> it, definitely, it is. definitely. To get back to the, to, um, um, to to what you are doing, uh, what is uh, what is the dream of a young lady? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, at which moment you told yourself, I want to focus on governance. You know, um, uh, is it is it a moment? Uh, uh, I don't know. I want to do doctor. Or do, I want to do governance, or or it's just uh, the meeting of the people, or, or or something in your life made you uh, take this path. I think it's time and obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never was in corporate governance, but I really uh, and I understood that with the time because on in what kind of unique situation I'm right now because 
uh, it was really hard for me always to live in our society with uh, I have a very high developed uh, empathy mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of hard for me yeah. to live in this world especially in our <laughs> with our mentality in my my grandmother is is uh, editor and uh, and my grandfather was director so you know they grew me up with this this kind of view on on life and I, when I was a child, I was making some, trying to do some projects or grants just to, to change the, the mentality through the movies and then in other projects. And then, but originally I was always a good project manager and event or organizer. And I got to the UCGA as a project manager and then the client service and then that's what I mean. That, and then um, uh, no, I, I think I don't think that it would take took me because I'm professional corporate governance. I'm not. <laughs> uh, but I think um, and they invited me to join this position uh, when the COVID came. So I mean, thank you guys for doing this, <laughs> taking me, giving me company in crisis, <laughs> first time in my life. I will do my best. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a very interesting challenge. Are you yourself also part of boards? Well, yeah, yeah, I have my own board of director and with, to which I'm reporting and they're really supporting me. But that was kind of, you know, this transformation. And this feeling that I have right now because we have a crisis even with our topic. It's not, you know, it's not, some, not something that you can touch or, uh, or you know, just bring on the table. And it's not something that will bring you the result immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to grow with it. So we just put in the seeds. And then just, you know, in the gardeners, you have to boil it, you have to, you just, you just grow this flower once you can take it and um, just look at this beautiful creature of your own. But for me personally, corporate governance is, it's not only those boring principles that are noted in the Wikipedia, it just is like, Principle this you did not read it. I did not read it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But it's uh, it's really it's this you know this trust the the honesty transparency cooperation. It's like evolution and transformation. It's new opportunities. So I'm very into the uh, like to change this mentality, make this shift, and just try to educate people how they can use this instrument and how in this by the end of the day we will change the mentality and it's like you're like uh, I'm not saying that you're an old guy but you're just don't, don't be mean. <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean we, we all like a very uh, you know just responsible people mm. we are not a ch uh, children and trying to be but, and we you know it's how it's hard just yeah. to change the, the already grow, grew up person it's it's mm. it's hard so we have to go from to the beginning of it. So starting to talk even in schools, how it's important. I mean, just have this low, like side of classes with, uh, mm. with children. Listen, you're going to grow up. There's going to be such kind of instruments. This is what you need. Then in universities, you can bring them in more details. Mm. And step by step, they will reach this point if, if they're in their career that they will understand, oh, I know what is board directors. This is not not new for me, so I'm ready for it at some point. I will, but now we're dealing already with created existing problem. What's next for you this year? What is your personal bucket list? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <you> <laughs> You asked me about, is there something that I don't like to talk about? <laughs> I didn't think that's going to be a bucket list. Well, um, I really, very, I'm trying to, I, I have to be honest that we're dealing with some crisis within our organization and with, the, you know, this human resources more than with the, the situation around. So my my i want this year to be the same as 2021 when we just flew up and i mean we to do like 10 programs in a year to to see this significant shift in the business society i am i don't want to just you know tell i know that the dreams or the the goals should be smart and very specific but some, it's it's hard to just you know just to put it in in the numbers right now. Yeah. 
-hmm. but but really I, I my personal dream to find I mean it's not my personal dream come on it's the, the whole world dream except for Russia suckers mm -hmm. um, to to win this war as soon as possible you know breathe out and start to work on the future that will be very stable that you can understand that okay it's coming it's coming and I, I know how to deal with it but to write a new page yeah it's right we read I mean we, we, we're writing it right now but you know this just this the the episode mm -hmm. just we I want this episode to, to be finished just to the end. yes the okay. end and then just you know this like in all the cartoons you're gonna open the window the birds will fly <laughs> everyone will sing it up we'll go I mean I, I'm, I'm kind of scared of this period of uh, celebration yeah. <laughs> of the victory I think that will be drunk constantly that's uh, that's uh, something I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm permanently under pressure and, and, uh, and running because I have a lot of responsibility on right and left and my main my main fear is a bit the same than you said at the moment you know when you have a big operation with NVIDIA yeah. my main fear is uh, you know to have this reaction of and to don't see something you know, to, to, to put down my pressure and to don't see something somewhere else. To don't, to don't focus because I finished something and I'm not keeping following my pressure. And, and I, f I perfectly understand what you, what you mean yeah. about this, uh, this, this final point, <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. <sighs> <laughs> Let it go! <laughs> Because if you just you, you, you keep it yes. and, and mm -hmm. you, you're wasting it a lot of yeah. energy, but still, I had a lot of discussions with our graduates, and I see that mostly um, better performing those who do not read the news constantly right now, who just you know just living like on an uh, automatic uh, this program, and you just keep you keep going. I mean, whenever was going to fail, I'll deal with it. You keep going, and. Uh, I would not say that I am such a person, but I would love to be such a <laughs> No, I, I keep going, but I mean, I mean it's just an excuse, excuses. If I'm giving you the last word, what would it be? Um, the darkest hours are always before the dawn. Yeah. So we are definitely like in the darkest hours, but it's, it's a bit of just, just keep, be patient that the dawn is coming up. Thank you for your time. It was a <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Thank you to uh, enjoy my French accent <laughs> and understand <laughs> everything I was telling you. <laughs> I love, by the way, I'm a huge fan of Bonnet and Deux. Bonnet and Deux. I love this radio because they're just making this French <laughs> edits inside. So enjoy that. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys to have follow. I hope you enjoyed a lot. Uh, me, I enjoyed uh, uh, very much this conversation. Uh, um, please uh, uh, comment, uh, tell me what you think about, uh, share, uh, speak with your friends, uh, and see you very soon. Bye.